Sony has been leading the full-frame mirrorless camera race for so long now, it was actually shocking when Canon's R5 beat it to 8K video. Now Sony is counterpunching with its flagship 8K 50 megapixel model, the $6,500 A1. The A1 is far too expensive unless you make a living with your camera. However, as Sony's top consumer model, it's a showcase for the latest sensors, autofocus, EVFs, and more that may appear in future cameras. It looks to be a powerhouse for both video and photography, but how does the A1 match up against its only real rival, the R5? Let's find out. Sony builds camera components as well as cameras, and it used a couple of fresh parts in the A1. The 50.1 megapixel backside illuminated CMOS sensor is all new and delivers not only high resolution photos, but extremely fast readout speeds. It's also the first camera with Sony's 240Hz 9.44 million dot OLED electronic viewfinder. This EVF is so sharp, bright and responsive that it should give pause to anyone who still thinks optical viewfinders are superior. While the A1 looks a lot like the A7S III, there are a few differences. It adds a handy dual mode dial for shooting and focus modes while moving the video record button from the top to the back. It's processing a lot more data than the 12 megapixel A7S III though, so is overheating an issue like with the Canon R5? The quick answer is no, but more on that shortly. Sony says the A1 is more rugged and weather resistant than ever, and I can attest to that as I dropped it a short distance on concrete and it didn't leave a scratch. Sorry Sony. It's also really nice to hold and use, though it can be slightly cramped to grip, especially with a large lens. Controls include shutter and aperture dials, a joystick, control wheel, mode dial, exposure compensation dial, and three programmable buttons. I wish all the top dials were push to lock, like the exposure compensation dial, rather than the awkward push and hold to unlock system on the other dials. Sony ditched its old menu system and the new one is far more intuitive. You can also use the touchscreen with the menus and not just set focus like before. Unlike the Canon R5, however, you can't touch a displayed setting to change it. Overall though, handling is a huge strong point. The A1 is the best feeling, most intuitive camera Sony has ever produced. The main downside of the A1 is that unlike the R5, its screen only tilts and doesn't flip around. That makes it a hard sell for vloggers in case the high price tag hadn't already discouraged them. It has Sony's unique dual slot system that accepts both SD cards and faster CF Express Type A cards. However, with no other camera makers supporting CF Express Type A yet, the cards are still expensive and hard to find. Sony crammed a lot of useful ports onto the A1 II. You get 3.5mm mic and headphone jacks, plus a full-sized HDMI port that's far more robust than the micro HDMI port on the R5. It also comes with a high-speed USB-C 3.2 port that can supply power, plus a flash sync and even a gigabit Ethernet port. Battery-wise, the A1 is rated for a decent 530 shots without the EVF. I was able to shoot photos all day on a charge, and it lasted about 75 minutes recording 8K 30p video, longer than I expected. I got around 2 hours of recording time in 4K. Performance is what sets the A1 apart from every other camera except the R5. It shoots 50 megapixel photos at a mind-blowing 30 frames per second in electronic shutter mode with continuous autofocus and auto exposure, or 10 frames per second with the mechanical shutter. Sony says you can shoot 155 compressed RAW files before the buffer fills. And when I was using the CF Express card, I found I could start shooting again very quickly after it first stopped. On the downside, it only hits that 30 frame per second mark if you use compressed RAW files, and it also depends on the shutter speed and type of lens. In comparison, the R5 shoots 20 frames per second, but it has no RAW limitations. Once you hit those kind of speeds, the frame per second number is less important than the autofocus speed and accuracy. Here, the A1 largely delivers where it counts, tracking fast moving subjects. It works well in touch tracking as well as face and eye detection modes. It can capture birds and animals well, though not quite as reliably as the R5. However, it's more dependable for people, whether you're shooting sports, portraits, or parties. 
Shooting speeds often dropped well below 30 frames per second for fast moving subjects, especially when they were close to the camera, but the same thing happened with the R5. Note that to really get the most out of the A1 autofocus system, you'll need one of Sony's latest XD linear motor lenses, like the new 24mm f1.4 and 400mm f2.8 models. The A1 comes with 5-axis in-body stabilization, but it only offers 5.5 stops of shake reduction with a compatible lens. Canon's R5 delivers 8 stops, so it can shoot at slightly lower shutter speeds and still deliver sharp photos. While performance is nearly even with the R5, the A1 trumps it in image quality. It seems to strike a perfect balance between pleasing skin tones and color accuracy. That said, some photographers still prefer Canon skin tones. Sony claims 15 stops of dynamic range for the A1 at lower ISO levels, and that's easy to believe. When shooting RAW, you'll be able to recover detail from overexposed highlights and underexposed shadows. That will relieve a lot of stress when you're shooting in bright sun or dimly lit rooms. And for a high resolution camera, the A1 offers very respectable low light capability. With the dual gain sensor, you'll see little noise when shooting under ISO 3200, and you can still get usable photos up to about ISO 12800. The A1 is just as capable for video and has fewer serious heating issues than the R5. Sony guarantees 30 minutes of continuous 8K recording, but I was able to shoot at room temperature for an hour or more before it shut down. After I popped out the battery and memory card and left it for 5 minutes, I could shoot for another hour. That's far better than the R5 both for total shooting and recovery times. The A1 lacks the raw and high bandwidth internal recording found on the R5, but it does have 10-bit recording in all video modes, including 8K. As a trade-off, the R5 has slightly better detail, but the A1's files are smaller and easier to work with. The A1 can also export RAW 4K, and Atomus recently announced that it will soon support that on the Ninja 5 with ProRes RAW. As with photos, the A1 has subject and animal or human eye tracking for video, and the system is rapid, responsive, and dependable. It's a match for the R5, and I honestly can't say which is better. They both have outstanding AF that's far better than on any other brand. The 5-axis image stabilization is fine for handheld video shooting as long as you don't move too quickly. I wouldn't use it if you're planning to walk around or move very quickly though. The R5, by contrast, lets you walk and vlog as long as you're fairly smooth. 8K video is oversampled from 8.6K, so it's pin sharp. However, full sensor 4K video has some pixel binning, so it's not quite as clear as the R5's high quality 4K mode. If you use an APS-C crop, you can get downsampled 4K with no pixel binning. The A1 supports all of Sony's S-Log modes, letting you significantly boost dynamic range. That allows for HDR production or just more room to over or underexpose shots and still recover detail. Unlike any other Sony mirrorless camera, the A1 supports S Cinetone recording borrowed from its cinema camera lineup. That delivers decent dynamic range and looks good right out of the camera, unlike S-Log footage. With a fast sensor readout, rolling shutter is heavily reduced compared to past Sony cameras. Even in 8K mode, it's barely noticeable unless you really jerk the camera around. To summarize, the Sony A1 is the most powerful mirrorless camera ever built, and it should be for $6,500. As such, it's an impressive display of Sony's tech prowess and shows that its camera future looks very interesting. But does it beat the Canon R5? The superior video and shooting speeds do give it a slight edge, but it's hard to justify an extra $2,500 just for that. For another $500, you could also get a hybrid video and photo camera by purchasing both a Sony a7S III and an a7R4. The primary market for this camera is professional sports, action, and wildlife photography. For that, the A1 has incredible speed and reliable autofocus, and the high-resolution photos are a huge bonus for cropping in. Another valid segment is dedicated 8K video shooting. The A1 is actually feasible for that, while the EOS R5 is not. If you look at it like that, the A1 is actually one of the cheapest 8K video cameras available. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe for more great tech content, and check out Engadget.com for a deeper dive.